Do you want ideas for using your card kits really efficiently without making a bunch of scraps to deal with later and just get those kits used? Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here to help you make the most of your crafty time and supplies. So let's get making. Today I have the December 2022 Spellbinders Club Kit of the Month, Love Grows Here, and I am going to be making a pile of cards with this kit. So there's lots of embellishments with the kit, which are gonna make it easy, and I'm gonna show you a variety of embellishments as I decorate my cards. But we're gonna start with pattern paper and my no scrap templates. So at JessCrafts.com, you can go and download these no scrap templates. It tells you how to cut your six by six paper to make A2 size cards without making any scraps. So for instance, this one gives you two cards without any scraps of the A2 size. I have other sizes and other pattern paper, so if your kit has some different size paper or if you prefer five by seven cards, you can choose some other sketches, but I will have a blog post where I link the specific ones that I chose today so that you can follow along if you have this card kit and that's what you would like to do. I chose A2 size cards because this kit from Spellbinders comes with A2 size cards. So that's kind of like what I always do with them. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a look at the sketch and pick a pattern paper that I think will go with it. But for my challenge today, because I always like to do something a little bit different with this video, if I can, if I can think of it, is to only use one piece of paper. A lot of times, because these are single-sided papers, I will take two of them and mix it up so there's more than one pattern on my card. But you don't need to do that with my sketches, and I wanna prove that to you by showing you single-sided paper on these sketches so that you can feel inspired to use whatever you have on hand. But of course, you can mix up the patterns, and I do that all of the time because that's really fun too. So for instance, with this sketch, I will look at it and notice a couple of things. You're going to cut this rectangle, but when you use it, so if I were to cut it out of this piece of paper, I would be cutting it out and the birds would have, a, and bird houses would have a clear top and bottom. So it's a directional pattern paper, but the sketch calls for me to turn it on, this, turn this rectangle on its side. And so if I want to make this exact sketch, a directional pattern paper won't work. However, I can be adaptable and also take this piece and turn it back around and use it that way too. So I'm just taking a beat to like look at the pattern, or sorry, look at the cutting template and the sketch and make a decision about what pattern paper will go well. When I have picked one, then I will put the sketch and the pattern paper that I chose for that particular sketch inside of a plastic envelope that will keep it all contained. And then that way, when I cut the paper and the mats and anything else, I can leave it all in there and I'm not gonna lose any of my pieces because after I pick the pattern paper, off camera, I'm gonna finish picking the pattern paper, I'm going to cut all of the strips and the mats and like everything that tells me to cut. I'm gonna do that off camera because the sketch tells you exactly what to do. It tells you exactly what size each piece of paper you need to make is. It shows you exactly what size mat each one of them needs to have around it. And if you want more details on any of these sketches, I do have videos dedicated to each sketch. So for this card, I'll focus on using the kit and rather than on how to make all these cuts because there's plenty of tutorials that I have on my channel for that. And for a lot of you, it's probably pretty intuitive about how to take a template and turn it into the shown sketch. Our first set of cards is gonna be using sketch number 20. And this one makes three cards. It's also super fast to do. So even though I usually try to keep it so it's not like a whole bunch of cards, cause I'm figuring if you have a bunch of pattern paper, you're not necessarily, you know, looking to make six cards with every sheet of pattern paper. You know, you wanna be moving through them quickly, but because this sketch is so simple that it makes the cards quickly, I think that that kind of balances itself out. So there's a three by three square in the center and then these smaller half inch strips on the top and bottom. So you will wanna look at a paper that looks good even when you cut it really small. Generally for this 
collection. I chose to go with navy blue as the matte. It was somewhat shaped by it, like I kind of had that in mind when I chose my papers, but I noticed that the palette of this card kit overall was pretty soft, so I wanted to bring in a bolder color with the mattes. And then, because this makes three, and I actually only have two because I'm gonna save the other one for an Instagram reel, but I decided to go with the chipboard piece that there were three of so that I could kind of use them all up because that is kind of one of my goals with the kit is to make good use of the embellishments, especially the first time through. So these already have adhesive on the back, I believe. Oh, maybe I'm wrong, misremembering. Nope, they do. Um, if you find it not quite sticky enough, you can always add some extra adhesive, but usually it sticks really well to paper. And then when I have that frame, um, one of the other frames also says smile. So I paired that with a camera die cut and a heart just to add a little bit of interest because I have a tendency to only use one die cut and then wind up with too many die cuts at the end. So I try to make a point to choose two for these. And then I'm going to be using this, I guess it's a moth. It's more like a moth than a butterfly to me, but I'm not really sure what the difference between the two of them are. And some like feather looking leaves. They're definitely leaves, but they have a little bit more of a feather look to them. But I'm gonna need to make sure that I put some pop-up adhesive behind both of these, which luckily comes in the kit. And then those will be decorated and I'll use the same set of die cuts for the third card because there are two of each die cut, which means that my camera and heart will be missing their match. For the next card, I have template number 19. This one I, I like a lot, but is a little bit tricky because it doesn't work well for directional pattern paper as this piece that you cut out of the bottom because they kind of fit together like puzzle pieces. That one gets turned upside down. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Also, this pattern can be a little bit tricky to deal with. I do give you measurements and I've made templates for myself based on those measurements. So it tells you like how long this side is because you have a three by six piece of pattern paper and then you cut this design out of it. So it tells you, you know, how to do that. And making the template is a real time saver with using this, temp this, this template going forward. Also, the thing that I like to do in terms of making a mat for this particular template is to cut one piece of cardstock to three and a quarter by eight and a half. And then you can go in and place one of the two pieces on one edge and the other piece on the other edge and trim this out. And then the leftover cardstock in here can be used for die cutting a sentiment for later on in the, uh, like later on in your card making or use it to kind of prop stuff up, etc. But that I find to be the fastest way. And then in terms of the cutting this, I kind of just eyeball it. But if you want, you could make a second template for what that usually looks like. Just like, you know, it'd be um, three quarters inch and all that. Um, but if you don't perfectly center things, that can get a little bit not so helpful. So it's kind of an eyeballing it thing, but that's not for everyone. So this is why I sometimes steer away from this template. When you assemble it, you place this piece down first and you can either try to center it or make it equidistant from the top two corners, however you like it. Normally I would say take a piece of cardstock and kind of prop up this edge as it will sort of bump off, but I'm actually using a thin cardstock today. I don't usually, I usually use 110 pound cardstock even for my mats. And that's in part because I don't like organizing 80 pound and 110 pound separately, but for die cutting, I really, really prefer 110 pound and for other uses. So rather than keeping two weights of every color of cardstock, I kind of just go for the thicker one. Um, but it is really difficult to find navy blue and I love it and I want to use it a lot. So because I haven't found a inexpensive or more inexpensive source of thick navy blue cardstock, that's why I'm going with the thinner recollections, which you can totally use all the time if that works for you use the chipboard embellishments this time. There's this one that says, no beauty shines brighter than a good heart, and that of a good heart, which seems like a great encouragement sentiment. And then I'm gonna just place it down gently. I don't wanna smush it down yet, but I wanna then pair it with something that has a heart on it because there is no heart in our patterned paper. 
There are these heart round circles, but I'm not quite sure those would work out. And I think these hearts would sort of fade into the background. So I'm gonna go with this little banner here, which means I'll need to either hang this off the edge or pop it up to overlap there. I think we'll just hang it off the edge. But there's only one of each of the chipboard embellishments, so when I make this second card, I'll have to just pick some other chipboard embellishments and do a different design. There are a couple of great sentiments in these chipboard embellishments this time, which is always nice because it makes for really fast cards. Next up I've got sketch number 32, which makes four cards. And again, I know I kind of said I don't really like to make a lot of cards with one sheet of paper, but it's again, it's just one of those like, sometimes an idea just comes to you and I just share them anyway, even though they're not necessarily ideal. But this is also kind of quick to make because they're just a bunch of squares. So you're cutting everything into one and a half inch squares. And then for the mats, you can cut it into one and three quarter inch squares or you could skip the mats if you want. I wouldn't recommend it with a light paper like this. So the paper that I picked has some bicycle riders and that has a peach background, which I just don't think would stand um, on a white card. Like it wouldn't really stand out. But if you want the darker card, maybe you could make it work. I'm choosing the navy blue cardstock, as I said before, for that reason, so that these lighter papers are really standing out. And I was kind of struggling with what to do in terms of embellishment because as I was trying some die cuts on these cards, I was noticing that a lot of them being lighter colors were not really like popping off the card. And I think it's in a way because they're competing with those navy blue backgrounds. But also this bicycle paper goes well with a few of the die cuts, but a lot of the florals and stuff just seem a little bit disconnected. So I decided to tie it in by using the bicycle die cuts that are available, but I have four of this card because it makes four, um, as I just said before. But anyway, um, I want to use the stamp set as well because it's, you know, the die cuts are super easy to use, but the stamp set, I thought, you know, coloring these guys would be really cute and I might still do that but I want to start using some of these sentiments because they are um, I like this one you're a whole lot of lovely yes you I really like that as an encouragement card and that's a kind of card I really like to make so I'm going to stamp that in a navy blue on top of this sun die cut and I'll have two of that and two of the bicycle die cut in which case I'm going to stamp it here in some of the extra white space. If you are a person who doesn't like the amount of white space that is left in some of my designs, what I usually recommend is embossing the background, but I've seen people also stencil, like um, do some ink blending through a stencil for the background. I've, I'm trying to think, I've seen a couple ideas. And I actually do wanna make a video dedicated to this because I have seen so many other people's suggestions or like what they do instead. And I like the idea of it. I don't mind white space, but I do understand that it's not for everyone. And so it might be nice to just have a little compilation of all the different things you could do in the background. So I'll probably pop up this die cut, but then you can kind of see how that design looks. And then here, the sentiment didn't fit fully inside of the sun, but I think it's still super readable. And as I was stamping this, I was using my Misty as um, some of these sentiments I haven't always gotten perfect images with. So I just like to have my Misty for the, um, you know, any stamping platform would do. But then I was like, oh yeah, it's sweater season here anyway, again. But if it's not sweater season where you are, um, Twiddler's Nook makes a cool tool. And there's there's a bunch of them out there, but I, I like this one from Twiddler's Nook because it's a cute color. And it allows you to just kind of like rub on the door of your stamping platform to get a little bit better of an impression and apply pressure evenly. Sketch 10 always makes me a little bit nervous because there's a bunch of these strips in the background and I'm always afraid I'm not gonna line them up straight or evenly spaced and I know that we don't have to be perfect as card makers because I almost glued that backwards but I caught it um but yeah I just like it takes a little bit longer it takes a little bit more thought however this mat makes it a little bit easier because I can know that's the center line for my A2 size card as long as I've lined it up in that box and then I know I don't want it like directly in the center because there's actually an even number of these strips. And sometimes this is why it's nice to actually make multiples. I'm only gonna be making two of this card, but 
if once I've like lined it up, I can put another card next to it and just match them to each other. So like if I liked it once, at least I can recreate it. And so here my goal is kind of to eyeball after that first one that I've laid down. So I'm again gonna just like make sure, ooh, I think I may have put too much space in between these middle ones. This is also why I only put a little bit of adhesive behind each of them so that if I need to lift it up and shift them around, I can. Hmm, let's see how it's going. Press lightly so that you don't have to, it's not hard to pick them up. This is where like liquid glue comes to me. You're like, I'm like, I feel a little bit scared of it because I think it's actually easier to peel up the, um, the tape lighter because if you put the liquid glue down, I mean, yeah, you have like a couple seconds you can lift it, you can shift it around. People always mention that and I, it's not untrue by any means. But um, once it's stuck, it's a lot more stuck in my opinion, which in some ways is a great thing. Um, I think I'm just really bad at eyeball, I don't know. Because I thought, you know, I need half of them above the center line. But now, in order to evenly space them, I'm kind of putting this one at the center line. This is, yeah, that's why this card makes me nervous. And then you got to line up all these sides. So this may not be the card for you if you're leaning more on the perfectionist side of card making. You have to be okay with it being a little imperfect. But it looks pretty good. I don't think from a distance anyone's going to think, oh, you know, you really messed that one up. And then you kind of do the same thing with the strips, but that's actually a lot easier in my experience. Um, but again, yeah, like if, that's why I also mentioned this before, I don't work with like eighth inch borders because it gives you less wiggle room and I, I need the wiggle room. I'm definitely that person. So the version of the sketch shown calls for you to take this piece that's cut. Um, vertically and make it horizontal. But you can totally keep it vertical. It's just that it tends to, the reason that I originally made it horizontal is that really fits very like easily centered on the card. Whereas if when you make it vertical, then it's almost the size of these four strips and it looks a little bit awkward. So then what I suggest doing is just shifting it down. So instead of centering it here where it looks like it fills up all four of them, Kind of just shift it down into the corner a little bit like that. But I'll just make mine horizontal because the paper I chose did not have any directionality. I always think I need to go back and make another sketch for that one just to, you know, so you know what to do when you have that directional pattern paper. But I got a lot of ideas <laughs> and I have like a, a backlog of sketches that I want to share with you all. So sometimes those take the back burner. I use the puffy stickers yet. So I'm going to use those for my sentiment. And then in terms of the die cut, I'm going to pick this blue one that has the blue and the green because I think it really stands off the pink. And just to kind of show you like that fades a lot more into it. It's just, it's really this pink is pulling up that color pink and it's not standing out. And also the scale's a little bit off. The scale's a little too small a larger die cut, you know, kind of demands more attention on the card. Things when they hang off, they look a little bit more dynamic. So that's why I'm positioning it in the top corner like that. So it's hanging off on two sides there versus centering it, which it would still would hang off a little bit more, but that's kind of my thought process or like, especially if there's no white border, I mean, you can barely see that at all. So you wouldn't want to use one of those. And then I can pull in this other green die cut maybe to add a bit to it. I think layering die cuts when the die cut itself already has a layered picture doesn't quite work as well. So I think I'm gonna skip that even though I was trying to use more than one die cut on each um, card. But because this image is layered, then this just looks a little bit more out of place to me personally, but I don't think it looks bad or wrong or anything like that. I just, for me, I kind of like the simplicity of the single die cut. And then I'll choose something in here. I would prefer if one of these dark blue sentiments made sense. I do want to use something that I could easily donate or I would, you know, like, thank you. I mean, I always need new thank you cards, but then it kind of fades right in, which is, you know, not the worst thing because I am letting my flower shine then. But those are things I would think about as I picked which sentiment to go with this card. 
For our last card, we'll be breaking out sketch number 37 and the dies that came with the kit. There is a whole set that makes the beautiful birds and we'll use those. So I'm gonna follow along with the sketch up here telling me where to place all of these pieces. You can mix up these pieces if that works better for your card. Also, this I chose a non-directional pattern paper. If you had a directional pattern paper, that would be problematic with this particular strip because again, it's cut with a vertical orientation and then put on the card with a horizontal orientation. There's probably a way that you could work around that if you want though. So these two pieces that are put on the back layer can be lined up or shifted over a little bit. I originally call for it to be shifted over a tiny bit. It's not a big deal. We're really just eyeballing it. There are no precise measurements for that part. If you were going to be using a much thicker cardstock, you might want to support these top layers a little bit, like in this gap area, because they could kind of sink down or the same thing here on the side. But it's not an issue with the thinner cardstock that I chose for the mats. Okay, then that's the basic assembly of the card. As you can see, the um, mats kind of break it up a lot. So even though it is the same pattern paper throughout, I think that's one of the reasons to maybe go with a darker matte color for this set of cards as I did is because the papers in this collection are a little bit lighter, but also, which I mentioned before, but also because I'm using the same pattern throughout, it really helps to break up the patterns a bit more. Okay, so I have the birds and I've die cut them because it takes a surprisingly long amount of time to you know, die cut all the little pieces that you need to because you have different colors. But Spellbinders does a lot of great things in that regard in terms of like grouping things together. So both wings for each, like for both birds, you cut out at the same time, you cut out the beak and the legs all as one die. There's not like a teeny tiny leg die, but as you can see, even all three of those are quite small you're probably going to want some kind of tool to help you to put these together, like to grab these little pieces. Cause I have done it a number of times with just trying to do it with my fingers and it can be quite frustrating. So that one there is from um, Trinity Stamps. I have this Spellbinders tool though as well, which did help me to get a lot of these little pieces out from inside. That is something about this die is that it cuts all these little holes. So you could skip this piece if you're not in the mood to get all those little ones out. You could also just leave all the pieces inside and then it would just look like texture. So either way, but I understand that, you know, sometimes that the, the little bit of fussiness that is involved is not for everyone with dies like this. And then the eyes are actually cut out separately as well. You could be careful to put them over a spot that is just kind of solid behind them because I'm actually gonna use white eyes for this one. And they, that would also save you some time, but it all depends on you know what you're layering it over and what kind of look you're going for. I'm trying to turn that one upside down so I have it not that it matters all that much, but I'm gonna go through all the time it takes to cut these dies. I'm gonna try to do the best I can in assembling this final card. I probably need to put like a little black spot in the center of the eye. I know black birds do not have pupils like that, like white eyes and whatever, but I just felt like if I put black eyes, then you wouldn't see them, but maybe that's what I need to do. It looks a little funny. So as you can see, I did not fully test this out ahead of time. I do write, like they give you the reference sheet so that as you're putting it together, you can make sure that you're putting the right wing on the right bird, etc. These bigger pieces, obviously it's quick enough to do with your hands. You probably want to tuck the tail piece underneath. So something to keep in mind, which I did not, but I sh I'm gonna be able to get it in there. Um, but you know, you kind of want to stop and think about all those things before you assemble a die. And sometimes the first time is when you learn that kind of stuff and then you'll fix it. Now I realize that I'm making these two birds identical, which in the bird world, usually the brighter bird is male 
and the female bird is like more subdued in color. So if you're looking to make a male female couple, maybe you want to do that. But this is also kind of a good way to maybe represent a difference. I don't know. So just a thought there. Um, but also it doesn't have to be a couple. I'm not really going for the look of a couple of birds, whatever that's um, relevant. Okay, so now I've got to attach these little legs. I made sure to use adhesive on the back of this gold piece. I really like how the gold cardstock looks in general. It has a, like, very much looks like little metal embellishments. And I did the same thing for the beak. I just was like, well, you know, they included this gold cardstock, but now I'm kind of thinking there's really no foiling on this paper. So maybe it would have made sense to pick a foil paper and maybe I'll have to come in with a sentiment that has foiling. Okay. So this is where it breaks down. I was like, oh, I'll put adhesive on the back and it'll save me time. But now I have this little piece of adhesive. I have to get off the back of this teeny tiny die. So, you, you know, I feel like there's pros and cons. I think that that's why some people prefer glue um, because then you don't have to peel off the teeny tiny pieces. So you do what makes sense for you. Okay, so I wanted to incorporate some more gold. So I picked some die cuts. I had thought about using, because there were a couple of gold sentiments, but they say so happy and love you. So happy doesn't quite feel like a sentiment to me. And then love you, I don't really have a lot of purpose for love you cards. I donate a lot of my cards and that would be an odd thing to say to a complete stranger in my opinion. So it's not something I would put on a card um, for what, you know, my purposes. But of course that would be a really quick way to add the gold in. And this is an excellent set or excellent kit for making those kind of cards. So I'm gonna just glue some flowers down in the center to kind of balance out and incorporate the gold. I did add little black pupils to their eyes. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but they kind of look like cartoon birds to me from that perspective, which I don't necessarily mind. And then I'm just gonna pull a sentiment from the puffy stickers because that is quick and easy to do. Here are the 13 cards that I made with this month's kit. If you found this video inspiring, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next Templar tutorial and check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.